I'm so sorry, it's so long. Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is my August fabric haul and sewing plans video. I say August, it's probably going to be August, September and October because I am surrounded by piles of fabric. I have been banging on about the Savannah collection for a very very long time. I initially thought it was going to be a really summery based quite small collection. Then I went fabric shopping. <laughs> the majority of this is stuff that I bought for the pirate capsule collection that I told you guys about in September last year which I have started working on. There's a lot of fabrics in here that you've seen in that one so the, the Savannah collection is going to be a smaller part of the overall pirate capsule collection which I am going to continue on working on once this one is finished and as I say there's lots of pieces in here that Blend, will blend into that other collection as well. In fact, I think I am using most of the solid fabrics, if not all of the solid fabrics. Oh no, there's still rust in the navy over there. But the, the remaining fabrics I have after this collection will be complete are all the patterns for the Pirate Capsule collection. So this is kind of a smaller part of it. It's going to be based around the Savannah print, which I am wearing. As you guys know, and I have shown you quite a lot of these fabrics, quite a lot recently, but Mum and I have just come back from the Festival of Quilts. I was on a two month fabric buying ban up until then to save money for the Festival of Quilts. This is already going to be a long video, so I'm going to stop waffling at you and start. Okay so as I mentioned this is based around the Savannah print and I have loved this print for a very long time. I have a lot of different bases here in fact I think I have every base that they do Savannah on in this little pile right here and so you can see the cubby hole back there is very empty because this is where it's been living. Up until recently they hadn't done the Savannah on a viscose which was something that I really really wanted them to do and they finally launched it this summer whilst I was at the Festival of Quilts I bought a 33 meter bolt. <laughs> now Rachel and Judy for, um, both have some of that. Mum has three meters and the rest is for me. It's excessive. I mean this amount of one print is excessive. I acknowledge that. I love this print. I wear this dress frequently. I had done a collection based around this pattern or this print before when we went to Lanzarote and I'll try and include a link to that video, the lookbook up there. I was trying to make a lot of things in 10 days before we went. I managed it but I didn't fit myself as I went along. It was all patterns that I'd made many many times before so I kind of assumed that they would all fit and I've been putting on weight and they didn't. I managed to film that lookbook but none of those pieces are truly wearable because I can't zip the skirt all the way up. The trousers were too tight. Uh, this dress fits and I wear it frequently. The cow neck top that I made was too tight, it gapes across here, um, pulls across here, sorry. I still have all those things in my wardrobe and I'm hoping one day I'll be able to get into them, but they were made with the Lena crepe. And whilst I like that, as you guys know, I'm not a huge fan of wearing polyester. The Lena crepe is actually a really, really lovely polyester. And as long as I think about what I'm making with it, i.e. skirts that are lined, then I have quite a lot of it up there in different prints and I will be making more things with it but I won't be buying any more of it going forward. So when they released Savannah on the viscose it's a natural plant-based material. Yes it's man-made but it's a plant-based material and it has the same type of drape as the Lena crepe. So I, uh, I purchased quite a lot of it because I want to recreate the five panel circle skirt and the 6563 top that I have made previously. I also want to make an eve dress and I have cut myself just over three meters and washed this. I have a lot of eve dresses. I wear my eve dresses. I have one in the Cobra Corsage Loretta Lawn which is similar to this but that Loretta Lawn has a little bit of stretch in it and I love it. I wear it all the time. So I'm really looking forward to having an eve dress in this print because it's going to be something that I wear frequently. I'm also going to be doing a Vogue 9345 shirt and I'm going to work out how can I can extend the bottom of the bodice of that dress and just make it sort of four inches longer so it's a fitted shirt that I can wear tucked into things and it's going to be the one with the giant sleeves super giant sleeves and the tight cuffs. When I made this dress I used hexagonal shell buttons and I have a whole set of those to use with this the rest of this collection going forward. I've got different sizes so I'm going to use three small hexagonal buttons on the cuff and then I'm going to use the hexagonal buttons down the front and I'm really excited about that shirt. I then have enough left I think from my bolt because 
like I say, so I ended up with 25 metres myself. Mum's had three, so that's 22. I've cut another three, so I've got 19 metres, probably just over a metre for the top, so that's 18. Probably four metres for the skirt, that is bringing me down to 14. Three metres for the shirt, because that shirt takes a lot of fabric, because those sleeves are huge. In fact, it brings me down to 11, I think. So I've got quite a lot left. I'm thinking I'm either going to make the McCall's 97945 dress, or the now and then beach pajamas. Now I love both of those patterns, but they are kind of, to me they're not quite as day-to-day -day getting dressed going out kind of dresses or uh, jumpsuits. They're the sort of thing that I throw on when it's super, super hot. I want something comfortable, but I still want to feel elegant. Given the choice, if I only had a limited amount of this fabric, I wouldn't make those things. I would have rather have the Eve dress. But as I have so much of this fabric, I think I'm going to treat myself to one of those and I don't know what I'm gonna do with the remaining yardage or meterage once I get to that point. We shall see. But that are my pl those are my plans for the, oh, no, I've got one more plan. The pattern that won the vote on Patreon it was the McCall's 7659 top. So I'm going to be making view C from the Savannah Viscose. I may make it from one of these other ones first just to check that I like it. I'm pretty sure I will. I really like the look of that top which is why I put it up for the vote. I'm going to be making that top as well. So whatever I have left I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. It will be... I might just... I know this sounds mad, I might squirrel it away for later, for when I change shape again in the future, just in case they don't continue to print this print, because it's been going on for years now, this Savannah print, because it's one of their most popular ones, but yeah, I just, I, I might squirrel it away for future use, just to, just in case, you never know, shapes change, don't they, as we have found out. So having waffled through all of that with you guys, I still have a decent chunk of the Lena crepe here. So what I'm planning on doing with this is using it as lining for a jacket. I'm probably going to be making the Sorrento jacket and I'll show you what fabric I'm going to be making that out of when I get to it. And I know the Sorrento is not lined. I prefer lined jackets, that's just me. It's a denim jacket, I know it's not meant to be lined. I, it's just a preference of mine. I'm not saying you have to do it, it's just something that I want to do. I think that this as a lining is gonna look really cute. I have quite a lot of decent sized scraps left there. I have enough that I could probably have made a shirt out of it. But as I've said, I'm not a huge fan of wearing polyester, especially on my top half. There's definitely not enough for another skirt and I'm gonna be making one of those out of the viscose anyway, so that's fine. Next up, we have the leftovers from this dress. So I managed to get this dress, a face mask and a hair scrunchie and then I've got this much left. I'm probably going to end up using this to line a bag. It will be facings for waistbands for trousers, pockets, things like that. There, again, I tried to get a shirt out of this but there wasn't quite enough for me to, because this is also a directional print, so it wasn't enough for me to get my shirt pattern pieces like for the Gertie shirt, for example, on onto this to then cut it out with, a, with the birds being the right way up. And that's something that would bug me if they weren't. So I've got a little bit of this left over and I'm going to get it down to the point where there are just tiny, tiny scraps left. I want to get this all used up. I've got that as well. And I mean, this is how much I love the print. I'm, I've, I've kept everything. <laughs> so next up we have the viscose jersey so this has got kind of like a crepey texture to it and it's a much creamier background i think yeah look you can see here the kind of it's printed out quite differently i that's not something that bothers me at all i actually have two cuts of this because i originally initially bought three meters of it to make the McCall's 7319 I think I have that number right dress I made it out of the Cobra Corsage version of this print uh, or this fabric and I needed more more than than the three meters because I have widened the skirt so it looks like the pattern envelope because the made the pattern envelope is really deceiving the view I think it's view C the little sort of navy dress at the bottom is what I want and the dress that the lady is wearing they are made from the same skirt pattern piece there are two skirt variations on this dress that is it I, I've tried to widen it a little bit and I didn't like it so I widened it even further added seams into it and now I love it I've made two of them I wear them frequently I want to make more and I have quite a lot of this Lady McElroy jersey crepe with their different prints on it and I am not ruling out making 
every single one of those prints into that dress because I love it. I really, really love it. You guys have asked for a sew along for that one because the overlays and stuff are a little bit confusing. So I will be doing that as well. Hopefully extra little bonus sew along because it's not going to go up for a vote because I'm making it from this fabric and I'm doing that pattern. That will be going up as well at some point over the next couple of months. I've got five meters of this in two cuts. That means I'm going to have enough for a t-shirt as well. I think I'm going to do the sew over it cow neck t-shirt because this has such it's so so drapey i think if i tried to do something like the gable which is much more clinging i think it wouldn't look quite as good as the cow neck t-shirt and the cow neck t-shirt is going to work in really well again with the other separates i can wear it with the skirt from this print i can wear it with some of the solids from this that i'm from this collection that i'm going to show you in a little bit next up told you I have it on every base we have the linen chambray of this particular print as soon as they bought this out I bought myself three meters of it it is gorgeous I think I want to make some wide leg trousers with this they may well be my wrap round trousers which I love wearing in the heat I haven't worn them yet this year I need to dig them out I think it's because they need ironing and I'm a very lazy person having said that it might be something and again this is a pattern that Karen sent me for my one of my very first KB pattern swaps it's a trouser pattern I want to say 7131 I may be wrong but there, be, there will be pictures on the screen I think this fabric and this print would look amazing as those trousers I made made a pair and I just I hadn't worked out crotch depth properly. I kind of just added an inch and kind of went with it and they, they, were, they weren't they were quite enough. I love them because they're flat at the front, they have pockets, they're wide legged and then they're elasticated at the back. And they were so, so comfy other than being too short in the crotch for me. And only by around about like a half an inch. If I'd have added two inches to the crotch depth, they would have been perfect. So this linen chambray is either going to be a pair of wrap round trousers or the wide leg trousers with the elasticated back and probably will end up being the elasticated back trousers because they will be more wearable for longer rather than the wrap trousers but I'm not ruling anything out so this is the linen chambray and then finally I'm not done yet finally we have the cotton drill with spandex in it I have two and a half meters of this and I really 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 hope I can get a pair of the decades of style empire waist trousers out of two and a half meters if I can't I will buy a little bit more because I know they're going to be loud I know they're going to be super super loud but I kind of think that a pair of high-waisted trousers with some of the shirts that I want to make is going to look amazing most fabrics aren't wide enough to put the two pa pants or trouser legs next to each other it might be if i cut them out singularly i might be able because again this is directional so i'm going to need to make sure that my birds aren't upside down because we don't want that if there is because the point that i'm trying to get to is if you fold this fabric in half and cut the trouser legs out you end up with a, like a long narrow strip down each side which happens to be the perfect amount for a waistcoat now i have made a lot of the 5193 waistcoats i've made three of those i'm not ruling out more because i love it that was a present that pattern was a present from the very lovely daisy may for a kb pattern swap i also have this new look pattern which i haven't made yet which has got a lower front and a collar on it which again i really really like the look of and I want to try one of those two is probably this this the like the excess of this is probably going to get turned into one of those two waistcoat patterns which again I appreciate is going to be a lot me wearing a big bishopy sleeve shirt with a waistcoat and and trousers out of this print I get it it's going to be a lot but you know what that's me I love bright prints I love loud colors I don't mind standing out from a crowd so yeah that's gonna happen it's very gonna be very 70s I think I, I do think those the decades of style are 40s style trousers I think if I styled it in that way it could end up looking very 70s which is not something that I am opposed to yeah two and a half meters of this I may need a little bit more to fit my pattern pieces on we'll see I also have made a bag from this print the Celine bag which I love and I've never got around to making a matching wallet and I really want to do that I'm going to be probably making I think it's the Roxy or the Rosy wallet but it's the one with the little side gusset so it doesn't completely flap open but that's a really thin very thin wallet and I'm going to be making that 
There's also a circular bag pattern from Aura Rosso. Aura Rosso. I really like the idea of that because again, I think that's going to lean very 70s. I've tried to get hold of some tan mora leather from the UK, but they've sold out of it. So I'm going to have a look at the other colours that they have available, but probably end up ordering the mora leather from Emmeline Bags. There's also a new bag coming from Erica from Lavender and Twine. I can't tell you anything else about it, then it's coming out soonish. I'm part of the testing group I'm not going to be able to test the pattern but I did get a sneaky peek and oh, it is gorgeous so I may well end up making that as well which is what my scraps of the lawn will get used for the lining so you see I'm thinking about this but I made my Celine bag out of this and I would like to make a matching purse and I think I'm going to have the correct size scraps after making the trousers and the waistcoat to do that. So that's everything that's 19 minutes of waffling about the Savannah print that is all the basis that I have it on I don't think it comes on anything else I'm gonna have a have a look I think maybe the Cyril crepe and I don't know what that is and they didn't have any at the show that I could touch and feel and have a look at but again I think that one's polyester so it's not the end of the world I think I have all the natural fiber bases that they make of this print I think it's going to be an awesome collection okay so I'm gonna put these ones back in their cubby hole neatly so that I have room to show you all the rest of the things that I'm going to be working on two secs the cubby hole is gonna get bigger and bigger as we go along. One of the things that I noticed when I started sewing is that I just had this scattergun approach to everything. It was like, oh, that's a pretty fabric, that's a pretty dress, I'll make it. Thankfully, I wear dresses daily, so I have found that I have had a wearable wardrobe, but a lot of people, when they start sewing, and again, not everyone, <laughs> but a lot of people when they start sewing do the same thing. It's like, oh, beautiful dress, beautiful print, make the thing. And then they never really have anywhere to wear it. And they don't end up with a wardrobe full of clothes that work for them. They end up with a wardrobe full of pretty dresses or pretty tops or pretty whatever you gravitate towards. You find that you still don't really have anything to wear. I'm a huge fan of Emily Horman. I'm not saying that collections are my idea. And she, I don't think she even claims them as her idea. No, you know, fashion designers have been making collections for years on much grander scales than this. Although I don't know, I'm kind of the amount of fabric around me. I am rivaling maybe one. The idea of sewing in a collection for me means that I will have interchangeable pieces in my wardrobe. So I will have loads of outfit options. As I say, I'm happy to wear a dress every day, but I do miss having trousers. I miss having jeans. I miss having different things like that I can put together. I make so many skirts as you guys know and I very rarely wear them because I have no tops in my wardrobe. I've gotten a lot better. I've made a lot of t-shirts but I still prefer wearing woven tops with some of my skirts and t-shirts with trousers. So that's just how my brain works. Sewing in a collection like this, and this will be the first proper, I've done lots of mini ones, but this is the first proper giant, well-rounded collection. And as I say, it's a small part of the overall pirate capsule collection. So by the end of the year, the hope is that I will have a wardrobe full of clothes that are interchangeable and work with each other. So, I mean, I love making coats, but all of my coats tend to be loud prints and so do all of my clothes so getting dressed I end up wearing the same kind of three coats that I've made that are plain on the outside with funky linings that's what I'm trying to do here is make some things that I can wear you know that it'd be like oh that's the savannah collection so that goes with that with that and that and that so that's the premise behind this is to try and round out my wardrobe because whilst I have some beautiful clothes and I do have some beautiful, beautiful clothes that I've made, even if I say so myself. I don't really have things that work well together, which is why I'm trying this. I think it's going to work. I love this idea. It's just, it's making me so happy sitting here with all this fabric around me like this. So let me carry on and talk about the rest of the plans that I have for this. So when I was at the show, I was saying to the girls on the Sherwood stand that they... If, if they don't already that they really ought to think about doing coordinating prints with their, their their big prints like this I'm not great at print clashing but one of the things that I was looking at especially with different people that do so in collections is how they used a loud print to anchor the collection and then brought in other sort of basic but not really prints like ginghams stripes and polka dots so that's what I've gone for and obviously solids that co coordinate well with the colours in the loud print. So saying it to the girls at show is, it's like Lady McElroy should definitely do a gingham stripe and polka dot 
series that blends with their louder prints like this and sell it as a this is you know we're, we've done the hard work for you this is the capsule collection they definitely have some polka dots and random dot prints that work really well but i ended up having to go to fabrics galore for my gingham and my stripes so i i think that would be a genius idea if they kind of took the colors out of their prints and went here are the things that go with it the ladies on the stand were saying that they do kind of pair like have you seen these eight fabrics that go with this one i think it's a genius idea because also shopping online it can be really difficult to judge the color of a print for example the kiwi cobra corsage it looks lime online and in real life it's more of a kiwi it's like a true kiwi color i have taken inspiration as i say from other people like there's like if i was a designer there would definitely be more than one loud print in this collection but i tried matching different leafy prints with this and nothing quite looked right for me i don't have an eye for that i definitely don't but the stripes polka dots and ginghams looked great with it so this is what I've got and obviously solids. So that's enough waffling. I'm going to show you what I've picked out. So I went through on Pinterest and pinned a whole bunch of fabrics before I went to the Festival of Quilts to give me kind of like a shopping list of what I was looking for. And one of them was an embroidered cotton. So I ended up, the one on my Pinterest was green, but they sold out of it as well. So I couldn't get it. It was from Lamazzi. I ended up getting this corally pink, which goes really well with the flowers and some of the w wings of the birds. But this is corally pink embroidered cotton that I am going to be making a pleated and gathered skirt with it. I have three meters of this and I'm going to be using the fabric on the cross grain so that there's no seams in it other than the back seam. I'm probably going to end up with some decent sized scraps left over from this which I'm not sure what I'm going to do with but I am aiming to be as like to use as much of each print for different things as possible so you'll probably see this in some other things as well but yeah this is going to be a pleated and gathered skirt that's going to look really really good with the shirts that I'm going to make from this print with the woven t-shirt with the actual t-shirts I've got the coral embroidered cotton to start with I am going to just keep putting them away up there so <laughs> I don't end up making too much of a mess one of the places that I go to frequently for solids is the fabric room. They have so many beautiful fabrics. A lot of them are polyester. I did buy a lot of them to start with. I've worked with them. I just don't like wearing them. But they have a whole section of viscose. I would like the colour range to be larger, but for what they have is great. So I bought five metres of this Militaire green khaki. I think this was the viscose crepe. And then I've also got five metres of the coral and this is the viscose maricane so this one has slightly more texture to it than this one i've got five meters of each and i am planning on making a shirt and a skirt with this one i'm not saying that all of them are going to be giant bishopy sleeve shirts <laughs> this might be a short sleeve shirt but there's going to be quite a lot of statement sleeves in this collection as well that's where my my brain goes to pirate with those kind of sleeves that's where the pirate part of this collection comes in as i say i have lots and lots of dresses i have lots of dresses i want to try and make some more separates especially tops so skirt and a shirt with this one i may well make a dress with some of this like a 9345 with some of this and that with that sleeveless only takes three meters of fabric. Short sleeved, it will just take over a little bit of that, so I'll end up with some left. So I'm thinking that I might make a shirt with what I've got left of this as well. And again, I'm, when I'm thinking about the patterns, I am really trying to be conscious of what's going to work with the other things that I'm making in this. So that's, again, it's why it's not all dresses. It could easily be all dresses. Next up, I have a plain linen chambray in like a sage khaki colour from Lady McElroy. And I've got three metres of this one. Now again, this might end up being some trousers, but I was thinking that this would also work really well as the bottom half of a colour blocked dress. If you've watched the vlog that I filmed today, you know that I'm feeling way more self-conscious in plain things than I do in loud prints. So this entire collection is going to be interesting because there's a lot of solid colours in this. This would make the great a great bottom half of the 6380. Now that I have a few patterns in my stash that I've talked about making colour blocked dresses with and I've tried the 6138 no 6130 and I'm not a huge fan of it because of the collar I don't I'm not liking how that's sitting but again I it might grow on me so I'm not ruling it out because I did make the 6130 jumpsuit in a combination of a dark green and the savannah visco no the savannah polyester crepe 
as the top. And I really, really like that, but I don't wear that one because I really like how it looks, I should say, but I don't wear it because I don't like how it feels. I still have that in my wardrobe though because I, I, I keep trying it on but it just doesn't feel nice so I need to um, let that one go because somebody will love it. This is definitely a candidate for some colour blocking because it works really well with the cotton lawn so I was thinking the little bit of cotton lawn I've got left I could use as the top part of a dress and I could use this as the midriff and lower parts. Either going to be trousers or a dress, a colour blocked dress we shall see it's really really lovely i like the uh, linen chambray from lady mcroy it's a really it feels really nice so there's that one i'm so pleased i'm being neat as i go <laughs> so as i mentioned earlier one of the things that i was thinking about for this collection was the type of buttons that i was going to use and when i made my dress that i'm currently wearing i use hopefully this will work uh yeah you can see that the hexagonal shell buttons so i use those to for for this this shirt dress and i love how they look i have 16 here i'm probably going to need to buy a few more and i thought i had some of a smaller size for the cuffs and it doesn't look like i do it looks like i have the square ones so i'm going to be using hexagonal shell buttons as well as the coconut buttons because i just love how these look and i have these in a couple of sizes as you can see whenever i make shirts it'll be using those buttons to uh, do the closures hopefully that will kind of help tie everything in together as well i'll be using the coconut shells buttons for like the waistcoats maybe self-covered buttons with some of them as well so i'm you know i'm trying to i'm trying to think of ways to make it all cohesive things that will work together without being too matchy matchy but yeah, I, th I think I think that's a good idea. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below what you think. Anyway, back to fabrics. So next, I have another wool suiting fabric from Lady McElroy. If any of these are available, I will list them all in the description down below. I know I have bought some the last of some of these ones. This is a lovely, lovely wool suiting in beautiful coral colour, which works really well with this print because again, the flowers, I'm not sure if any flowers, yes, the, the flowers here are bringing in this this actual tone. I'm going to be making a three quarter circle skirt from this particular piece of fabric. I have washed this, it did say it was washable and there are a few little bubbles on it so I'm gonna have to be careful about cutting this one out but I think it's going to make an absolutely gorgeous skirt and it's gonna go really well with the shirts and t-shirts I wanna make from this and then also some of the solid colored pieces as well. So this is going to be a three quarter skirt. I need to put all the corals together now. It's very pleasing. <laughs> Next, I have a viscose melange that I got from the fabric room. They don't have any more of this color. They only have a gray and a petroly blue color, uh, which are both lovely. This was kind of a happy accident. I had this next to my canvas, no, cotton drill fabric in this print. And the this color is in the palm leaves, the spikier leaves. I think some up here. Yeah, there we go. It's It's in these leaves up here. So I think it goes really well with this print. The cotton drill I'd actually bought two and a half meters to make ginger jeans so making wide leg trousers out of them isn't too much of a departure they were always going to be loud trousers but again this is going to be some kind of top I've got three meters of it because you have to order three meters when you order from the fabric room it's going to be a top it's going to have big sleeves there's this grasser pattern which I think this fabric would look lovely in this is not going to work quite so well with the coral pieces but it will work really well with the rust colored pieces creamy pieces and the green pieces as well but I do think that the coral and this together might be a bit much. But it feels lovely. I, I ordered this because it was, I didn't know what viscose melange was. I still don't, but it feels really nice. And it's got, it's, I think the melange comes in because there's different color threads running through it. So it's not all just, that. It, there's kind of a bit of variation in the threads in there. So this one is going to be a big sleeved, top of some description. Can you see a theme? Okay, next up we have some wool suiting. It's got a lovely twill texture. This is really, really pretty. It's wool suiting, it's dry clean only, so I haven't washed these ones. And I have a two and a half meter cut and a one point, I think eight meter cut as well. So the first two and a half meter cut I bought for myself and then James and 
Big Bird gave me a voucher for Sherwoods for my birthday. I bought the remaining fabric because they don't have it anymore. It's the Brea wool suiting. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And this will be a trouser and waistcoat set. I would love to do a three piece suit out of this and I would totally go back to buy more if there was more available. But as I say, I think I bought the last of it and they don't have it listed on the website anymore. So I'm going to get as much out of this as I possibly can. I would love like i said i would love to make a jacket out of this as well try my hand at tailoring properly a jacket i've tailored a coat sort of I need to watch more julia bobbin if you haven't watched her on instagram her jackets that she hand tailors are just stunning although i don't have 18 weeks to spend tailoring a jacket so maybe not but this will definitely be a waistcoat and trouser combination i'm not ruling out a skirt from this as well but I'm worried that I won't have enough fabric to make the kind of skirt that I like. I made a couple of the skirts from the Butterick 6380 and whilst I like them I don't love them so I'm not sure. Depends how much of this I have left. I may end up making two of the two different types of waistcoats out of what I've got left because I also got this silk from Selvage and Bolts. I got it from Dibs. We went up to Northampton to see her showroom or her warehouse. It was just so much fun and I'd seen this on the website. There was supposedly 50 centimeters of it left. Turns out there's one meter 25 centimeters of it left and I bought all of it and it was always intended to be the lining of the waistcoat to go with this wool. Given that I've got as much as I have I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what else I'm going to do with it but I love the two together and I think it's just going to be beautiful. Usually when I make waistcoats the, you're meant to use the lining fabric for the back of the waistcoat the part that's seen because I don't make jackets to go with my waistcoats I usually use all of this fabric because you know you 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 use lining fabric on the back of a waistcoat because it's going to be under a jacket and never seen but I'm, I'm I'm torn between which do I do do I make this visible or do I just line it with it what do I do but I think the two of these together look gorgeous and I'm really excited to see how they come out so yeah I'm really pleased that she still had this because it went on sale on the website and I was sure someone was going to snap it up but I got it so these two together are going to be a trouser and waistcoat combination plus whatever else I can squeeze out of the fabric I'm not ruling out a baker boy cap there's probably going to be a lot of Baker Boy caps in my future from the scraps of suiting that I've got. <laughs> I'm killing my battery and my other one's not charged. This is, could be a disaster. So anyway, the next fabric that I have out of this cubby hole is this old gold needle cord that I got from Sherwood Fabrics. I ordered Cadbury Purple and this is what turned up. So I messaged them and just said, I don't think this is the right one. And they said, no, we're very sorry. And they let me have this for half price or I could send it back. And then they sent me the one that I actually ordered. I mean, when it arrived, it was a beautiful colour, so I kept it. It works in really well with this collection again. Again, it's pulling out the colours from the spikier leaves. This one, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. I was thinking maybe trousers, but then I've got that that's going to be trousers and they're very similar in colour. I was thinking maybe a skirt, but I've got a lot of other skirts planned. So I think what I'm going to do with this is the Sew Over at Sorrento jacket. I got to try Rachel's on at the Festival of Quilts. It is gorgeous. I now know the size that I need to do. I now need the tweaks for the length because I need to make the sleeves longer like she did, an inch and a quarter, and then I'm actually going to shorten it so that it is a properly sit at my waist jacket. Rachel made no alteration to the length of hers and that's how it sits on her and she's two inches taller than me. I think that if I just take mine up by an inch it's going to sit at my natural waist and that's the look I'm going for. This is the one that I am going to use the Lena Crepe to line and again I know I don't have to line it but it's just a preference of mine. I prefer line jackets, I do and as this is not a traditional denim jacket because I'm making it a, a needle cord I think I can get away with that and it'll look cute when I roll the sleeves back as well and you can see a peak of the lining so you know I'm, I'm really I'm, I'm on board with the uh, lining of jackets. And another thing I could do is, because the Lena Crepe isn't quite slippery enough, but this is very slippery. So I could always use this to line the sleeves, which again would look really cute like, uh, when you roll the sleeves back on the jacket. Again, I have three meters of this. It's probably going to end up with a fairly decent sized scrap left out of it. I can imagine myself making a slouchy hobo bag out of this. I have a couple of patterns that I love. Again, maybe a wallet. <laughs> baker boy cap something like that but I want to try and use all of it but it is definitely going to be a Sorrento jacket for this one it's so pleasing that they're all in color order now <laughs> the final thing I have from that cubby hole not the final fabric obviously is this raw silk 
that I got from Stitch Fabrics. I've got three meters of this. I was really intrigued and it was eight pounds a meter. So I thought, you know what? I have no idea what this is gonna be like. I'm gonna give it a go. It's a really loose weave. So I'm gonna 100% have to line this because otherwise the skirt would be see-through and I am making a skirt out of this. I also think that trying to put buttonholes in this is going to be impossible. So I'm going to make a three quarter circle skirt with a waistband. I'm gonna put a faux placket down the front with my coconut buttons and it will have a zip at the back and a hook and eye to actually close it i think this is going to look awesome i think i'm probably going to have enough for a waistcoat as well <laughs> and before anybody says how many waistcoats does one person need i mean i don't need all of these but i really like the idea i i i, I don't need suits and I, as much as i want to make a suit jacket out of that brielle wool i don't need suits but i like dressing smartly uh, and I, I like the idea of waistcoats. How many waistcoats does one person need? Not as many as I'm going to make. But the other thing is a waistcoat, the pattern pieces tend to be fairly small pieces. So I can usually squeeze them out of the odd off cuts that I get left from cutting out shapes like half circle skirts or three quarter circle skirt panels. There are usually quite large chunks at the side that aren't really great for anything except maybe bag making or a waistcoat. I'm probably gonna end up doing the new look waistcoat with this one because there are fewer closures on that. And as I've mentioned, buttonholes in this, I don't think are gonna be a good idea. I can always put decorative buttons on and then use press studs underneath, but I think the lower closure new look waistcoat is going to be the way forward. That's what this one's going to make. And again, it's gonna work really well with the shirts from this. It's gonna work really well with the plain shirts. It's gonna work really well with the t-shirts I'm planning on making as well. So excited about this one. And it would be nice to finally use it because I. <laughs> Like I say, when it arrived, it was like, oh, that's what this is. And at eight pounds a meter, I was willing to risk it. I always prefer touching like fabrics that I've never worked with before and don't know what, they, what they're like or how they drape or anything like that. I always prefer to feel those in person, but eight pounds a meter is not cheap. I'm not saying that it is, but it was also something that I was willing to take a risk on because it was from Stitch Fabrics and I trust them and their descriptions. Like I really like most of the fabrics that they stock and I've never received anything from them that I've been like, oh. Uh. So yeah, there's this one. It all came out there, it's going back in. <laughs> so many opportun thumbnail opportunities. <laughs> so as you can see, I have three cubby holes full of this viscose jersey. I got it from Minerva Crafts. I don't think they have it anymore. It always said there was something like a 110 colors available. The majority of them were sold out and they couldn't get any more. They just left them all up and I kept finding ones that they were, either came back into stock and they they'd found an extra bolt of it somewhere. So I have 30, 32 of these, not including the colors that I've already made up. I love it. It's very, very drapey. It's not great for super structured t-shirts, if you know what I mean. Like the thicker, it's not a clingy one. It's, it's a show every lump and bump type of fabric. So I need to bear that in mind. But I have pulled out these five colors. And again, as you can see down here, there are more colors that will go, that green would go as well. But I limited myself to these five because otherwise I could end up putting so many, I mean, we, they probably will get made. They probably will at some point be added into this collection. But I thought I'd start with these five colors. So we've got coral, we've got the mustard, we've got the khaki green, we've got the darker green, and then we've got the bottle green, all of which go really well with the savannah print, as you can just about see if my hair wasn't in the way. There we go, that's better. <laughs> I am going to be making a variety of tops from this. There will be gable t-shirts, there will be sew over at cow neck t-shirts, there will be Paula turtlenecks because that's going to go really well under this dress and I would like some of those. It's going to have some drape drape t-shirts from DP Studios that Teresa got me for my KB pattern swap this Christmas. There is going to be... there was another one that I wanted to make. <laughs> I can't remember what it is but the, the point is there is going to be a... oh a wanted tea probably more than one wanted tea. So I have two meters of each of these and I can usually squeeze out two tops, one long sleeved, one short sleeved from two meters of this fabric. There's going to be 10 t-shirts getting added into this collection and again as I say I'm not ruling out more of those colors being added in at a later date as we go through but these were the ones that I picked out that I think work the best. I mentioned the Paola t-shirt and there probably will be quite a few of those made from these and possibly more colors as well because in the colder months I like wearing a roll neck underneath this dress with then a cardigan on top it's just an extra added layer of warmth. Another thing to mention is I have jumpers that mum has knit for me that work with this collection. She's also knitting me the ruffle schmuffle in 
this colour basically which is going to go with this collection as well so there's going to be knitwear pieces added in but as I've mentioned mum knits and she is making them for me which is very she's made some already and she's going to be making more for me which is incredibly lovely of her I have a few roll necks from next that will get added into this as well so this is this is what I'm trying to aim for is stuff that I already have in my wardrobe that's going to work in with this and work really well with this and then adding pieces to it to make everything just a little bit more kind of you know useful uh, I, there's a word I'm looking for and I can't think what it is but make everything in the, my wardrobe work a little harder because it will all kind of interchange and work with each other so these are my viscose jerseys and again thumbnail I need to see if I can work out how to cut myself out and put Savannah in the background that would look good trying to learn photoshop badly at the moment as you've probably seen from the shoddy attempts at my current thumbnails if you're still here thank you for sticking around this long we are a third of the way through <laughs> next up i have another lady mcelroy fabric and this video is not sponsored i am just a huge lady mcelroy fan i always purchase through showers they have the best deals they do different discounts every weekend and i love them and if you haven't noticed that for the last four four years then you've probably not been watching my channel for the last four years but welcome and enjoy and highly recommend lady mcelroy and showers so this next one i have is a Lady McElroy fabric. I have a meter of it. It does have quite large borders. This is good because I'm planning on using those for like the neck band. I am going to be making a drapey top. My sister-in-law recommended and I hope I can find it this pattern. She actually sent it to me because I did have like five copies of it which we got when we went to the dressmaker's ball and it was in the goodie bags and they all gave them to me and I'd given them all away thinking I probably won't make that and then my sister-in-law suggested it and it was like oh that's a genius idea and I have I don't know if you can see I have a red burgundy and brown version of this blingy sequiny goodness so I think that this in a drapey top over for example the canvas the cotton drill trousers is going to look really chilled but also like a little bit extra and this is me we're talking about I've always been a little bit extra and again I'm not ruling out using the brown one the burgundy doesn't quite work but it will work with foliage canopy which is a collection that's going to be coming in the new year <laughs> So, yeah, sparkles. I love this. My my inner magpie is going to be very happy that I'm finally using this one. And then I have this fabric from Higgs and Higgs. It is so so unbelievably soft. Rachel is the one that showed me that they had this, and I went and immediately bought a meter of this color and then a meter of the cream. A meter is not enough. This fabric is very very narrow, and also the the kind of the cables run from selvage to selvage so you have to cut everything out on the cross grain has lots of stretch so that's totally fine but it is a very narrow fabric and I didn't check that before I bought it I was like a meter I'll get a, I'll get an Astoria out of it no so I bought this color and the cream color and I have made the cream color up and I used this for the body of it then I used a basket weave for the sleeves and then some ribbing for the cuffs waistband and Oh no, I used, I used what I had left of this to make a funnel neck on the cream one. The cream one's going to work really well with this collection so it will get added in. But I went back and I've got another cut of this. In total here I have two and a half meters of this fabric and I'm hoping that two and a half meters will be enough to make this grasser pattern. It's a copy of an Isabel Morant jumper. It's absolutely gorgeous and I think it's going to look really really nice over this dress if I have my one of my Paola turtleneck tees on because I'm assuming it's going to be a bit chilly when I'm wearing this outfit. So Paola turtleneck t-shirt, this dress, that jumper, yeah I think that's going to look really nice and it also hopefully will be warm enough that I wouldn't then need to put a coat on top of it because those sleeves I'm not going to let a coat go on top of them. So maybe I need to make a cape. Ooh. Ooh, you guys, are, you guys give me the best ideas. <laughs> so yes, this is going to be a jumper of some description, but I'm hoping it can be that grasser pattern jumper because I love it and I would really like to make it. So I'm going to go through the rest of the top fabrics that I have and then we can move on to this little pile here which you guys haven't seen for a while. So the first one is this double gauze with gold spots on it from Higgs and Higgs. Again I- oh my battery's dying, two secs. You're on a not fully charged battery so who knows how long this is going to last and it's just died raining as well, how dare it. So anyway <laughs> Moving swiftly on, this double gauze from Higgs and Higgs with the gold dots all over it. I found this and pinned it to my Pinterest board as a reminder for when I was at the show that I was looking for something like this and they had the exact one there. Again, this is 
kind of going with this colour that's in the spikier leaves of the savannah. It's not quite what I, I was hoping for a slightly more muted colour but I really liked it in person. Gold dots are beautiful. I am planning on using copper hardware in all the bags because I've already used copper hardware on the Celine bag that I've made so I'm planning on putting copper accents throughout this but I think one little hint of gold is not going it's gonna be fine it's on a gold background as well I got three meters of this and I'm not sure what I'm going to make I saw this paper cut pattern and somebody had made it in double gauze because I searched double gauze on Instagram for inspiration I've never worked with double gauze before it's gonna be fun I really liked this I think it's a paper cut pattern I liked how that looked I also like the idea of something like the McCall's 8040 with the big sleeves. I think that will work. Again, I'm going to do some more research on double gauze. I'm going to have a look and see what other people have done. I know Lauren from Guthrie and Garney has done a video on working with double gauze. So I'm going to do some more research because I have two of them. I have this rusty coloured one as well that I got from Bombay stores. So I have these two to make tops with. I have three metres of each. I think they're going to be tops. Most of the stuff that I'm saying is going to be either tops or bottoms, isn't it? There hasn't been many dresses mentioned. Two dresses, maybe three? <laughs> if you guys have any pattern recommendations, given the kind of look I'm going for, which is big sleeves, blues on effect, I mean, maybe sort of slightly more fitted because this fabric is quite poofy in and of itself. But yeah, I'm quite happy to have suggestions from you guys because I'm not overly sure on these two what they're going to be but I think they're going to look really really lovely with the collection whatever they end up being I think I'm going to be very happy with them and it's going to be fun to work with double gauze for the first time I'm putting everything away as I go so that I don't have to tidy afterwards when I started waffling at you at the beginning of this very long video I was talking about spots stripes and ginghams and I have two of those here so I have this chambray from fabrics galore which is a sage green stripe and then I have this bottle green gingham again from fabrics galore and I have three meters of both of these and I really like how they look with this print so I think that a shirt in this with the skirt with my tan belt on tan boots and a tan handbag is going to look really lovely I also have so basically if you haven't noticed I'm planning on using tan and dark brown accessories with this collection I have tan boots in a variety of styles I have tan shoes and I have some dark shoe dark brown shoes and boots in a variety of styles as as well so I think it's all going to work in really really nicely together so both of these are going to be tops I have as I say three meters of each of these so I'm planning on shirts and then possibly like the by hand London Anna top that I have attempted and kind of worked out what I want to do with it I'm thinking that that is going to be what happens with these two because probably bigger sleeves with the shirts which means that I needed that extra fabric that three meters just to be on the safe side and make sure that I could really do the thing that I wanted to do with it then the Anna bodice as a top takes so little fabric I think I'll be able to squeeze one of those tops out with the kind of leftovers from making the shirts from these also not ruling out playing around with sort of chevroning the stripes but that could also get a little bit because this is already an eye hurty fabric as it is and I just think if I start chevron chevroning the stripes it might get a little bit too much for the eyeballs to take another thing I could do with the stripes would be make a Vogue 9345 have I got that number right? No, 9357. I could definitely make a 9357 with this fabric as I say it's a chambray so it's slightly heavier weight but if I make a dress with this then I won't be able to wear it with this print which is what I want to do so yes tops definitely tops out of these two and then the final new fabric that I have to show you because the rest of this is from the stash is this batik rayon I got this from Roy's material world he, the website is being set up at the moment I've never heard of them before they were at the festival of quilts mum bought some jersey from them I got this is that just over three meters left I could totally make an eve dress out of this I'm not ruling it out but I think and I there's a plane going overhead I think I'm going to make another bishop star sleeved shirt with this because it goes so well with the tan kind of solid and I'm just thinking that this 
with those tan trousers and the waistcoat is going to look gorgeous and then I could also wear it with the trousers from the cotton drill in this print I can wear it with the skirts I just, mm, I think this needs to be a shirt. I'm very tempted to make an Eve dress out of it and I'm not 100% ruling it out. But as I've said and mentioned a couple of times, I don't feel as confident in solid colours as I do in print. So I'm thinking maybe I ought to try and stick with separates for the solids so that I feel more confident wearing them. But we'll, we will see. I haven't got anyone where for those three to go. <laughs> I've run out of room. <laughs> So this next little bit is stuff that I've had in my stash and a lot of these were bought for the Pirate Capsule Collection. They will go really well with the Pirate Capsule Collection. They just so happen to work really well with this print as well. So the first one is a denim from Lady McElroy. Now I washed this and it's kind of got those white stains. Apparently these white stains come when you use too much softener in your washing. I don't mind them. I, I don't dislike the overall effect of these. I have three meters of this fabric. I think it's called cedar. I will have listed it in the description box down below. This is literally a Spitfire overhead doing loop the loops. They're always so much louder on camera than I think they are in real life. I think he's gone. So yeah, I think this color is called cedar. I have three meters of it. I have made a deer and doe looping jacket from this brush cotton twill in, in pumpkin. So I'm not gonna make a jacket from this one. I think I'm probably going to try some trousers. Spitfire's back. I think I'm gonna try some trousers because I do also have a skirt made from this. I'm not super precious about this one so if the trousers don't work out brilliantly it's not gonna be the end of the world which is why I'm willing to give it a go with these and I tried some 9257 Vogue trousers with some denim. I made two muslins for them, got the muslin fitting perfectly and then the trouser, the made up final pair of trousers ended up two inches too big which I still don't understand to this day it's, I'm, I'm still salty about that so yes so i'm going to try another pair of trousers with this not sure which ones yet it's quite a stiff fabric maybe the true buyers lander pants i have traced that out so i think that could look really nice in this but i'm not 100 percent sure what that's going to be yet but I, I saw it, it works with this collection, so I thought I would add it in. This is the brush cotton twill in pumpkin. I think I have that name right. And I have made a skirt and a looping jacket out of this fabric. I have a decent amount left because I bought this from fabric.com. I got six yards of it and I got the end of bolt as well. So I've probably got about six and a half yards of it. I might make a trench coat. Having said that, I have another trench coat possibility coming up. I really like this color. I think it goes really well with this collection. It goes really well with the, the overall pirate capsule collection as well. I'm not, uh, this, I'm not sure. I think a trench coat in this would be, would be a good idea. And again, it's not super, super precious to me because I already have two garments out of it that I love and that work really well. So I'm thinking that this might be a good one to experiment. So maybe the Deer and Doe Lausanne or I have the sew over Anna trench coat. There is also the sew over at Soraya, which I would like to try and lengthen, but I'm not sure how that good an idea that is. So I've got some options, but I think this is going to be a trench coat, I think. We have the, it's a Terralin and wool blend made in Huddersfield in England. And this is a, I've got two and a half meters of this. It's a khaki green with looking at it like a tiny little hint of sort of rusty red going through it which I'm not sure is going to show up on camera. This I bought at the same time as I bought the Briar wool thinking that they were going to be similar and this is much 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 stiffer and it's incredibly itchy whereas the Briar wool is just beautiful to touch. So this this kind of threw me for a loop and I didn't know what to do with this because it was bought with the intention of making trousers. If I make trousers with it I will have to fully line them because there is absolutely zero chance of me wearing those trousers next to my skin and not wanting to take them off immediately. I was also thinking maybe the McCall's skirt which is the skirt that I made with this brushed cotton twill which I really really like although I stupidly traced the wrong size so I need to trace the next size up just so that it fits me at the moment or I was thinking I could try the style arc ziggy jacket with this I have two very precious fabrics to me to make the ziggy jacket in I've been threatening to make the ziggy jacket for a good four years now I think I'm terrified of it because style arc are notorious notorious for 
brief instructions. Now there are sew-alongs for the Ziggy Jacket. There's a lot of help out there to go along with the Ziggy Jacket. I think Tomcat Stitchery is going to be doing a sew-along for the Ziggy Jacket as well. I might bite the bullet and try it with this because I think a moto style jacket in this colour is going to work really well with this collection. I appreciate that I've got 1940s trousers, 50s style dresses, 70s style cloak like styling options and then like a kind of much more modern moto style jacket to go in with all of that might look a little bit weird but I think I can pull it off. And I think that's one of the nice things about fashion is that you can totally do you. You do you, as I keep saying. I think if you pair them all in such a way that you feel confident, it doesn't matter if they don't quite go together, it will look like they're meant to go together. So that is a definite possibility with this one. Then we have another of the denims from Lady McElroy. I think this one is evergreen. Again, it's done the same thing when it's gone through the wash. I've ended up with it looking like this. I mean, thankfully it's all over. It's just not in certain parts. It is all over. And I think, I think it's the way that I've washed it. I think it's my fault, but I don't mind it. I like it. And again, I have two and a half meters of this. This is a denim. I will link it down below for you if it's still available. And I think this would be another one that is good to experiment with some trousers. So maybe like the Morgan jeans. I've decided against the ginger jeans because I just don't like how I look in my current skinny jeans that I have. They're shop bought so they don't fit perfectly but they're not my favourite. And I really, I don't like how I look in them. And I don't, I feel, I feel very comfortable in them but I don't like the outfits that I can make around them and they're not quite high-waisted enough and they yeah so I've decided against I've decided against skinny jeans and I think you guys know that I did that probably at the beginning of last year so I'm not going because all of the cotton drill like the savannah one that I showed you earlier I have five prints on that base they were all bought with the intention of making ginger jeans which is why I have two and a half meters of them all and this too it's just not going to happen so I need to find something else to do with them so I'm thinking maybe the Morgan jeans I'm not sure I'm going to like those any better, but I'm willing to experiment with this because I can get more of it. It's a plain it's a plain one rather than a print. I always feel much more precious about prints than I do plain fabrics, especially if I know I can get more of them. If I can't get more of them, then they suddenly become very precious to me and then I just like get the fear and don't ever cut into them and I need to get over that. I think it's going to be Morgan jeans or something along those lines just to have a look and see because you never know. I might love them. I might hate them and then they'll get donated, but at least I'll have tried. And then the very final, is this the final one? That is all one. Oh no, I've got two more. <laughs> this one, I don't even remember what this one is. I genuinely don't remember what this one is. I think I bought it from Lady McElroy at the same time as I bought the other ones. I will see if I can find it on my order history. It's a military green, khaki green. It is a cotton twill by the feel, feel of things. I think I probably have two and a half, if not three meters there and it's going to be some kind of trousers and it's going to be like the lander pants then they're made from a stiffer fabric I, th I think they look great i do like trousers and drapey fabrics but they tend to be way 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 more wide legged than so yeah this the the this would not be great for like the 7131 i think i have that number right but it will be great for something like the lander pants or something like that i completely forgot i had this one because it's exactly the same color as this one although this one has some shine to it this is the lady mcelroy cotton sateen i think it's called hague i have three meters of this i want to try and recreate now i'll see if i can get this name right simone rocher jacket that i saw under dear elise millen i basically would love to raid her wardrobe. I really think that this, because it's got that sheen to it that the other one has, it's quite thin so I probably will have to interline this and I will line the actual jacket as well even though the pattern that I'm going to use which is the trend patterns trench coat doesn't come with the lining. Now on the Simone Russia jacket and obviously the trend patterns it has these big external pockets and I'm not a fan of those so I think I'm probably going to leave those off. I may try and add on the pocket that the Simone Russia jacket has over the over the breast pocket at the top here. I might try and do that, but again, I'm not 100% saying that I will. I don't necessarily want to 100% 
slavelessly copy that Simone Rocha jacket to make it look like it's the real thing. I want something that is an approximation of it. I'm going to get a belt made by Harlequin because the it has a double buckle on it which I really really like the look of. I think that belt will then work in really well with some of the other pieces from this collection. I think the trend patterns jacket is slightly longer and it has different sleeves. I would like to add the volume to the sleeves of the trend packet patterns jacket which I think is doable by just adding some pleats on because looking closely at the Simone Russia jacket it does look like it's pleated to give that extra volume so I'm going to be taking elements from both of them to make a jacket trench coat out of this which is why I was not sure about the other one for a trench coat because how many trench coats does one person need? clearly all of them but yeah that was the final fabric so if you've got to the end of this incredibly long video thank you very much for bearing with me i hope this has given you kind of some kind of insight as to why i'm trying to sew in collections now my thought process is behind picking fabrics and patterns to cohesively work together as i mentioned when we started this i could easily sew all of these into dresses and it would be lovely it would be lovely and i probably would wear them but i want more separates i want more versatility in my wardrobe I want the opportunity to wake up in the morning and be like I fancy some trousers and a shirt today or I fancy a skirt and a t-shirt today or I want to wear a dress with a jumper over the top today I want more variety in my wardrobe I'm not ruling out that I'm ever going to you know I'm not ruling out that I will end up wearing just the dresses and the rest of the stuff won't work for me but if it doesn't then I know and then going forward I will just make all the dresses and stop making the skirts and the other bits and pieces but I don't think that's going to happen I think if I have those options in my wardrobe they will get worn and I'm so excited to see how these all turn out I think it's going to be awesome so if you have made it to the end of the video thank you very very much I hope you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and I will see you again very soon bye